talk. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Chapter 25. And I want to read verses 1 and 2. Second Chronicles, the Old Testament. Chapter 25. And verses 1 and 2. The word of the Lord reads, Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. And his brother's name was Jehoiada of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. I want to read verse 2 again because that's where our emphasis is going to come from. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. I want to use for a subject tonight, check your heart. Look at your name and just tell them, check your heart. I, I, I'm not getting enough participation. Come on, y'all. Y'all hear me out? I told y'all, y'all treat me like I will be vanished from with them. Come on, look at your name and say, check your heart. Check your heart. A little bit better. That's what we want to talk about. Check your heart. Who was Amaziah? He was a young king of 25 years old. The Bible lets us know from the 24th chapter that he was, he was son, he was the son of the previous king, King Joash, and his mother was Jehoiada. Now the Bible declares that he did that which was right in the sight of God. Now you know what? That was good. Say amen somebody. Amen. That was good. It was commendable. Because when you check the brother out and you find out there were 42 Jewish kings. Only 9 out of 42 the Bible spoke of as being good. The other 33, the Bible said that they did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Bible again says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. However, there is that preposition, but, in verse 2. Everything looked good until you got to that word. The word, but. The Bible gives a did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. In other words, not with a complete heart. He did not have a whole heart. Or some translation will even say wholeheartedly. Somebody say amen. But better yet, lift your hands and Lord have your way. Come on together and say, Lord have your way. Now, now, now he was a good king, or he was a good person to a degree. Because he, he had some training. He had a little training and had a little knowledge about the word of the Lord. Uh, he had some knowledge about God's law. You see, when King Amaziah takes over Judah, it was after his father had been assassinated. In fact, the last three rulers before him had been murdered. And when a new king comes in under such circumstances, especially uh, if your father had been assassinated, things are a little shaky because normally the enemy is still around. Are you following what I'm saying here? And, and if you go back and if you study history, you find out that when the king was killed, most times the enemy would seek all of the king's seed, especially his sons. If he had nine sons, they were more likely to try to kill all nine sons. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh yeah, they would, they, would, they would do so because they, they did not want that son the, who would become the new king to come back and to take revenge on them. So you can see the atmosphere that Amaziah, a young man, is facing after becoming king. And when he becomes the 
the king. He does as any other king of his day. He immediately seeks out his enemies. The, those men who had assassinated his father. He brings them to justice. Has them executed. But 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 now here's something you can command him about that. You can see something that was good within him. That the fact that when he had these men executed, he did not have their children killed along with them. The normal custom was well, when the new king came in, he's seeking the enemy. He would wipe out the entire house. Are you following what I'm saying here tonight? But this man had some knowledge about God's law because he was obedient to the law of Moses. And if you read further in the chapter 10, uh, and, and it was quoted from, I believe, the book of Deuteronomy, the law uh, that, that God had given to Moses, the father shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own son. So he's to be commended that he did not take revenge on these folks' children. Somebody say amen. amen. Amazon was a good person, but he had a heart problem. Help us have a heart problem. The heart in this message that I'm speaking of is not that organ that's near the center of your body that pumps the blood, but rather the heart here is the seat of your emotions and the seat of your will. Your will is a place of your decision. You see, the heart is a part of your soul. And the Bible says that he did that which was right, but not with a perfect heart, not with a complete heart. So in other words, his attention, his devotion to God was not wholeheartedly. And when, when God looks at you, when he looks at me, he wants the entire being. Yes. He does not want a part of you, but he seeks that you give him all of your heart. Yes. Come on and tell God, thank you. Thank you Lord. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have Come on, I want you to do better this time. Lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have if the heart is not perfect, it is not whole. That means that it is divided. Now, you might get some good results from a heart that is not whole. However, you will never give your best. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You can have a divided heart. It's not whole. You may do good things, but you will never give your best. And how many of you all know that God requires your best? Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Come on and say amen. Couple of illustrations here. And I, I, I know my son would, would appreciate this illustration because I want to talk about his favorite basketball team, the Los Angeles Lakers. And do you remember some years ago? Some years ago when Kobe Bryant, and even if you didn't watch basketball, you heard the name Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal were together. It was reported that perhaps they would be the greatest duo of all of basketball history. Oh, they talked about the dynasty that they were, they, had, they were going to form and how many basketball championships that they were going to get. Now they got a few championships, but, but some things happened. Because you, you see, uh, you, you find out, if you really look at the situation, Kobe played the game with his whole heart. And Shaq did not. Kobe was known to practice hard during the basketball season. And then during the off-season, vacation time, he still was practicing hard. So when they start all over again the next basketball season, he comes and he's ready. He's, he's fit. Amen. He's in shape. Well, what about Shaq? You know, Shaq was 7 feet, 200 plus pounds, big man. Shaq would come in at the beginning of a new season, out of shape, shabby, and old weight. And that would make Kobe angry. 
because he had given his heart to basketball to stay on top to win the championship. Yes. And the next man who had to be a part of the puzzle of their success, amen, had not given his whole heart. Did Shaq love basketball? Yes, he did. But do you, you, the question may be, did he love it with his whole heart? Are you following what I'm saying? Can y'all see the point of And because of that, friction soon developed between the two. Hey Amen. And eventually, it's going to cause them to go their separate ways. Well, let me ask you a question. Is it possible for a man to love his wife and yet have another wife? And I say yes, because he may love the wife, but not with a perfect heart. Oh yeah. You find that man that he's married, but he got a girlfriend. Listen, many times he care about the wife. He doesn't want to leave her. Even though he been promised a girlfriend, I'm going to divorce her, and I'm, I'm going to marry you. And she find out something different. Because he's got a certain amount of attachment to the wife. Y'all say amen. amen. And, and, and when you look at the situation, there's some love there. But it's not with a perfect heart. And oh, when the wife finds out, you know there's going to be some friction. There's going to be some trouble. Because what wife would want a husband that does not love her? With a perfect heart. With a whole heart. Now if a wife feels that way about a cheating husband, how does God feel about church members who cheat on him? Oh. Did y'all hear what I said? Who cheat on him? Did you not know the Bible speaks of spiritual fornication, spiritual adultery? Oh yeah! Look at what the Lord said in Jeremiah 3 and 20. He said, Surely as a wife treacherously departed from her husband. In other words, like a woman that is faithless to her husband. He said, So have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, said the Lord. In that scripture he said, that like the wife who is faithless, who does not love him with her whole heart, who is unfaithful. Amen. He said, Israel, you have dealt the same way with me. You are unfaithful. You are faithless. Do you really love me? Do you love me with your entire being? Do you love me with your whole heart? And you got to look at what God has done for you. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord rescued them from Egypt land. So I say amen. amen. Brought them into the promised land, a land that was so good to describe as a land that flowed with milk and honey. Yeah. Amen. There were giants in the land. But if they would just live right, every giant would fall before them. Yeah. Come on and say amen. amen. You know, I know the man that took them into the promised land, Joshua, fought 33 battles. And his record was a good one. His record was 32 and 1. Only lost one battle. And it was because that one battle was lost because of the sin of Achan, who had taken something from the accursed city of Jericho. Had he not done that, Joshua would have not have lost any battle. But even after Joshua, God was good to Israel, even when they were unfaithful to him. Even when they didn't do right. And so I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, how does God see us here tonight? Oh, Jesus. I preached a message was once, what does God think about me? And I want to ask you that question, or for you to ponder that question within your own heart. This is a reminder time, y'all. Hallelujah. I want you to ponder the question in your heart. What does God think about me? The Lord has been good to us. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all can say amen. amen. The Lord woke you up this morning. Amen. Since Riley talked about the other places we could have been in. Amen. I know you would rather be here than in the hospital room down the street. Amen. You would rather be here than to be in a funeral home tonight. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. You would rather be here than to be in the county jail. Some people in the jailhouse are there and they didn't do anything. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Say amen. The Lord has been good to us. That's why we're we'll over praise, first of all. Why don't you give God a praise right now? That he was facing a war with Edom. He uses the language children of Seir. And when he prepared for the war, the Bible said that King Amaziah had 300,000 choice men. He had a large army of able men to fight against Edom. But, but he was a little worried. Didn't think he had enough power. So he goes and hires 100,000 men out of Ephraim. The word Ephraim is just another name for Israel. Remember, the Jewish kingdom was split into two nations now. And Israel, which was the northern part, had grown to be quite wicked at this time. Come on and say amen. amen. So, but, but yet the king hired them, paid good money, amen, paid a lot of silver. But God sent the preacher, the prophet, to tell him that he was displeased with him hiring the men out of Israel. God was not in his corner. God did not like him bringing the men from Israel because Israel had become a wicked nation. Somebody tell God thank you. Come on and tell God thank you. So the preacher came and gave him a word from God. If I may put it in these words, don't let these men go with you. Don't let them go with you. Matter of fact, the prophet told them, go on with what you had, and God will help you. So many times, amen, when, we, when we're facing tribulations and we're facing difficulties, some of us, we forget to pray. Some of us, we forget to really see God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me tell you, thank you. And we conspire, we come up with things of our own to try to figure the situation out of, to try to solve the problem. But while you try to solve your problem, God has already made a way for you. Come on and give God a few musicians to come on up here. He was concerned about the money he had spent on these fellows. Amen. He had paid a hundred, a hundred talents of silver. And that was big money that day. So what am I going to do? I'm going to spend my money. But the I want to know the Lord is able. Yeah. Hear me say, He's able. He's able. He's able to meet your need. He's able. He's able to give you a turnaround. He's able to give you a breakthrough tonight. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Come on and tell God thank you. Come on and tell Him thank you. Bless you when you're around the 
fried food all the time. Over the years, the arteries are going to work hard. Those arteries go into the heart and hard. And you have a heart attack and you're gone. And some of you, you take in everything but the Spirit of the Lord and your heart is hardened. And I'm saying, Lord, soften the heart. Remember, the heart is a place of emotion. Emotion. Love is an emotion. Say amen to my to have the fear of the Lord as a part of your emotions. Also, the heart is a place of your will, your decision. If you're going to make a decision for the Lord, it comes from the heart. But if the heart is hardened, how can you come to God? And so that's why I said, Lord, soften the heart. Help, Lord, help. The people need help, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are several scriptures that speak about having a whole heart for God. Listen to Psalm 9 and 1. I will pray to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Psalm 111 and 1. Praise you, the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart and then sit up right and in the congregation. Everybody ought to praise God. Saint and sin. But you can't praise with a whole heart. Run up behind and read the frame. Whoa. I ain't know I'm going to say it. I looked at that thing last week. I watched the film. What did all these church folk? All on Facebook. Praise on the read the frame. Now, you can have sorrow in the heart that she died. Because she was human. And I don't know where she is. Come on, y'all. But I do know the music she the singles on God. Say amen. amen. And I do know if you're going to pray God with your whole heart, you're going to be listening to a lot of that stuff she was saying.